Welcome to this YouTube presentation. We will be learning some powerful information today. Our title is, We Must Study the Scriptures with the Aid of Our Publications. We are to read the Spirit of Prophecy and the Pioneer Writings to know what is the truth established from the beginning. I'd like to start with a word of prayer. Dear Lord in Heaven, we thank you for this day and we ask that you be with us now. Please forgive us of our sins and may what we learn today, may we comprehend it. Send your Holy Spirit to be with us to give us understanding and may everyone who views this video share it with their friends and family. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Going on to our topic for today. As the end draws near and the work of giving the last warning to the world extends, it becomes more important for those who accept present truth to have a clear understanding of the nature and influence of the testimonies which God in His providence has linked with the work of the third angel's message from its very rise. Well, we're here at the very end of time, brothers and sisters, and it's very important for those of us who claim present truth to have a clear understanding of the nature and influence of the testimonies that God has linked with the work of the third angel's message from its very rise. And we cannot separate the testimonies from the third angel's message. That's Testimonies, Volume 5, page 654, paragraph 2. Men may get up scheme after scheme, and the enemy will seek to seduce souls from the truth. But all who believe that the Lord has spoken through Sister White and has given her a message will be safe from the many delusions that will come in these last days. So it is the Lord who speaks through Sister White. It's not the testimony of Sister White, but the testimony of Jesus. And that's Selected Messages, Volume 3, page 83, paragraph 5. The Spirit of God is grieved away from the meetings when brethren make war upon those who believe that God has communicated light and comfort to them through the testimonies. It is time for the brethren and sisters to assert their liberty and perfect freedom of conscience. God has given them light and it is their privilege to cherish the light and to speak of it, to strengthen and encourage one another. Brother Jay would confuse the mind by seeking to make it appear that the light God has given through the testimonies is in addition to the Word of God. But in this he presents the matter in a false light. God has seen fit in this manner to bring the minds of his people to his Word to give them a clear understanding of it. Remember we are to know the nature of the testimonies um, and their connection to the third angel's message. They are not an addition to the word of God. God is making, bringing our minds to his word to give us a clear understanding of it. Testimonies, volume 4, page 245, paragraph 3. The enemy has made his masterly efforts to unsettle the faith of our own people in the testimonies. And when these errors come in, they claim to prove all the positions by the Bible, but they misinterpret the scriptures. They misapply the prophecies and the scriptures to prove falsehood. And after men have done their work in weakening the confidence of our churches in the testimonies, they have torn away the barrier that unbelief in the truth shall become widespread, and there is no voice to be lifted up to stay the force of error. Many who claim to bring positions or stand behind positions that are contrary to the spirit of prophecy will say we don't need the spirit of prophecy Bible and Bible alone but according to the prophet these people are going contrary to what's in the Bible they're misapplying the prophecies and the scriptures to prove falsehood and the testimonies are called the barrier it's the voice to be lifted up to stay the force of error that's three selected messages page 83 paragraph 3 you can't use the testimonies to support what you believe for one thing and then not use them when they don't agree with what you do believe. That which you term light from heaven, he has pronounced darkness, and the visions born of this error he calls a delusion. Will you believe this testimony? Will you heed what the Lord has spoken through Sister White, or will you cast the word of the Lord behind you? 
Will you quote this testimony as readily and make capital of it as you have of testimonies or of reproof given your brethren who have erred in some things? O consistency, thou art a jewel. So according to Christ through the prophet, you can't use the testimonies to support one thing and then not use it to support something that doesn't agree with you. That's not consistency. And we're told, O oh, consistency, thou art a jewel. Second Selected Messages, page 82, paragraph 1. Besides the instruction in his word, the Lord has given special testimonies to his people, not as a new revelation, but that he may set before us the plain lessons of his word, that errors may be corrected, that the right way may be pointed out, that every soul may be without excuse. Three Selected Messages, page 31, paragraph 3. That word besides means there's something else. So besides the scriptures, God's given us testimonies, not as a new revelation, but to set before us the plain lessons of his word so that errors may be corrected in the right way pointed out. When any person comes with some new theory of that which he calls new light, I tell him I know he has not the truth. I refuse to go into an argument with those who oppose the truth, but call their attention to the publication of the truth given me which has been written under the Holy Spirit's representation. If they will carefully read great controversy, the testimonies for the church, patriarchs and prophets, desire of ages, and all the many books that are in circulation, that bear testimony to the truth given at very times and in very places over a period of half a century, they would not be entering into temptation and walking in false paths where some are today. She wrote this in 1906. She said that which was given over a half a century, which is more than 50 years. She says when people are coming contrary to what is truth, she points them to her books. Brothers and sisters, for people to say we don't need to read her writings to know what is established, she, this is the testimony of Jesus Christ is not going to tell us falsely and that's from manuscript 34 1906 paragraph 3 this is from the new releases and the way you can find this particular quote is by going to www.egwwritings.org when you go to the website on the top left side you'll see two search bars you want to copy and paste some of these words with quotation marks on the front and the back beginning and ending and then hit enter and you'll find this quote how we are to study together you can form a bible class and search the scriptures for yourselves with the aid of our publications and in this way learn much of present truth you may present the reasons of our faith to those who shall inquire for them become intelligent in the scriptures Councils to Writers and Editors, page 112, paragraph 1. So when we come together to form a Bible class, how are we to search the scriptures? With the aid of our publications. And by doing this, we'll learn much of present truth. And this is how we can become intelligent in the scriptures. Our publications equal our books and periodicals. The world is to receive the light of truth through an evangelizing ministry, of the word in our books and periodicals. Our publications are to show that the end of all things is at hand. So we're counseled to use our publications when we study. Okay, and in this quote, that's our books, that's our periodicals. We learned in a previous quote, Ellen White's writings are publications as well. Christian Service, page 146, paragraph 1 early workers to speak through our periodicals. God has given me light regarding our periodicals. What is it? He has said that the dead are to speak. How? Their work shall follow them. We are to repeat the words of the pioneers in our work who knew what it cost to search for the truth as for hidden treasure and who labored to lay the foundation of our work. They move forward step by step under the influence of the Spirit of God. One by one these pioneers are passing away. The word given me is let that which these men have written in the past be reproduced. And notice how it says they move forward step by step under the influence of the Spirit of God. So the writings of our pioneers are 
our periodicals councils to writers and editors page 28 paragraph 1 not long ago I took up a copy of the Bible echo as I looked it through I saw an article by elder Haskell as I laid the paper down I said these articles must be reproduced there is truth and power in them men spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit councils to writers and editors page 28 paragraph 2 if you remember in paragraph 1 she's referring to these pioneers and that their writings are to be reproduced and here in paragraph 2 she's referring to elder Haskell referring to him as a pioneer and that what he wrote needs to be reproduced she says there's truth and power in it and these men spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit there are some people who are saying that Haskell is not one of the pioneers and that his writings are not important but we see here according to the prophet his writings are to be reproduced let us do our best to bring about unity and how do we do this I'm in a position where I cannot change the past experience if I would for the Lord has led me and has given me such evidence of his power in every advanced movement of our work that I have assurance made doubly sure as to every position we now hold as truth we cannot distrust such manifestations of the Lord's power in defining what is truth I am charged that we are to hold the beginning of our confidence firm unto the end we now need clearly to define what is truth and let not the enemy steal a march on us we know and Elder Haskell and Elder Loughborough know also of the earlier history of this work. Retirement Years 124, Paragraphs 1 and Paragraphs 2. Brothers and sisters, she starts this off by saying, let's bring about unity. And how is this to be done? By not changing the past experience, the things that have already been laid, that God has led us, and that we have the assurance she says doubly sure as to every position we now hold this truth and that we cannot distrust such manifestations in defining what is truth okay she says we need we now need clearly to define what is truth in the second paragraph it says elder Haskell and Loughborough know of the early history of this work that they are in unison that they know this truth so we need to be reading these men's books um, Elder Haskell shares something very profound in his book story of Daniel the prophet page 246 to 248 I highly recommend everyone read that read those three pages I think you'll find them quite profound and very interesting also um, also Loughborough has a book called the Great Second Advent Movement. See also Councils to Writers and Editors, page 145, paragraph 2, and Evangelism, page 111, paragraph 2. In Councils to Writers and Editors, we're told the record of the experience through which the people of God passed in the early history of our work must be republished many of those who have since come into the truth are ignorant of the way in which the Lord wrought elder Loughborough's book should receive attention our leading men should see what can be done for the circulation of this book and this book is called um, the great second advent movement so it should be receiving attention and the leading men of our churches should see what can be done for the circulation of this book some of Haskell's books are story of Daniel the prophet seer of Patmos the cross in its shadow and Loughborough's book on our history is titled the great second advent movement now story of Daniel the prophet is dealing with the book of Daniel Seer of Patmos is re 
dealing with the book of Revelation written by John. The cross in its shadow is on the sanctuary message. If you want to know the cross in it, um, the sanctuary message in detail, this is an excellent book. And then the Great Second Advent Movement book, that is the history of our church from the rise, from the days of Miller and his associates. Very powerful book. Everyone should be reading that book. And in Evangelism, page 111, Sister White tells us that Haskell's Bible training school that he started in New York City in 1902 um, was an excellent training school endorsed by God. He took the information from that training school and put it in this book called Story of Daniel the Prophet. I highly recommend everyone reads page 246 to 248 of that book. Please read those books in that order as well, the book, the way they're listed. A few are still alive who have passed through the experience gained in the establishment of this truth. God has graciously spared their lives to repeat and repeat to the close of their lives the experience to which they passed even as did John the Apostle till the very close of his life. And the standard bearers who have fallen in death are to speak through the reprinting of their writings. I am instructed that thus their voices are to be heard. They are to bear their testimony as to what constitutes the truth for this time. We are not to receive the words of those who come with a message that contradicts the special points of our faith. They gather together a mass of scripture and pile it as proof around their asserted theories. Councils to Writers and Editors, page 32, paragraphs 1 and 2. So we are to read these men's writings, and they are to bear their testimony as to what constitutes the truth for this time. And so those who say Bible and Bible alone, are rejecting what the prophet tells us. These pioneers have established what is truth. The very same Satan is at work to undermine the faith of the people of God at this time. There are persons ready to catch up every new idea. The prophecies of Daniel and the Revelation are misinterpreted. These persons do not consider that the truth has been set forth at the appointed time by the very men whom God was leading to do this special work. These men followed on step by step in the very fulfillment of prophecy, and those who have not had a personal experience in this work are to take the word of God and believe on their word who have been led by the Lord in the proclamation of the first, second, and third angel's messages. Second Selected Messages, page 111, paragraph 2. Brothers and sisters, Christ is telling us through the prophet that people coming with new messages contrary to what these pioneers have come together and established as truth that the prophet has endorsed okay they're speaking contrary to this and they don't these persons do not realize that the truth has been set forth at the appointed time notice she says the prophecies of Daniel and the revelation are misinterpreted okay we're going to see who did God raise up to give us such clear understanding of the prophecies of Daniel and the Revelation. According to the prophet, these men who've been raised up, we are to believe on their word, who have been led by the Lord in the proclamation of the first, second, and third angel's messages. Second selected messages, page 111, paragraph 2. Satan will seek to divert the minds of those who should be established, strengthened, and settled in the truths of the first, second, and third angel's messages. The student should carefully study Daniel and the Revelation so that they shall not be left in darkness and the day of Christ overtake them as a thief in the night. I speak of this book because it is a means of educating those who need to understand the truth of the word. This book should be highly appreciated. If the youth will study this book, and learn for themselves what is truth, they will be saved from many perils. One manuscript release, page 63, 
paragraph 4. In the previous quote, we learned that we are to be establishing the first, second, and third angel's messages. And now, in this quote as well, and she's connecting the book of Daniel and the Revelation by Uriah Smith as being a book to read to be settled in those three messages. And notice how she says, They shall not be left in darkness, and the day of Christ overtake them as a thief in the night. So, what topic does thief in the night deal with? It deals with the second coming of Christ. According to Jesus, through the prophet, we're supposed to read Uriah Smith's correct Daniel the Revelation book so that Christ doesn't come to us as a thief in the night. So we're to understand what he wrote of the signs and events leading right up to Christ's coming. She says she speaks of this book because it's a means of educating those who need to understand the truth not error of the word and that this book should be highly appreciated have you read the correct edition or have you read the incorrect editions if you've not read the correct 1897 edition which I will be posting the link you really need to read that book and reading this book is gonna prevent people um, from being in perils. It'll save them from many perils. Especially should the book Daniel and the Revelation be brought before people as the very book for this time. This book contains the message which all need to read and understand. It will be a power to enlighten the world. The Lord has shown me that this book will do a good work in enlightening those who become interested in the truth for this time. Those who embrace the truth now, who have not shared in the experiences of those who entered the work in the early history of the message, should study the instruction given in Daniel and the Revelation, becoming familiar with the truth it presents. First Manuscript Release, page 60, paragraph 6 and 61, paragraph 1. Notice how she starts the first paragraph off with especially. So like of all books, this is like the one that should be going out. Okay, it should be brought before the people as the very book for this time. Everyone needs to be reading this book. It will be a power to enlighten the world. We need to read it and understand it. We're counsel that this book is going to do a work enlightening those who become interested. Those who embrace the truth now, this is the book that they need to be reading. They should be studying the instruction given in this book. Becoming familiar with the truth, not error, as many claim that it presents. The interest in Daniel and the Revelation is to continue as long as probationary time shall last. God used the author, Uriah Smith, of this book as a channel through which to communicate light, not darkness, to direct minds to the truth, not error. Shall we not appreciate this light? which points us to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, our King. First Manuscript Release, page 63, paragraph 1. So according to Christ, through the prophet, the interest in this book is to continue as long as probation lasts. God used Uriah Smith as a channel to communicate light to the people. So it was Uriah that God used to get this information out. This is truth and not error. And we're supposed to appreciate this light. And we learned early, highly appreciate. And this book points us to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, our King. So this book points us and leads us up to the coming of Jesus Christ. Here is a link to the correct edition. The 1912, which has removed many paragraphs and has added things that Uriah did not write, as well as the 1944 edition, which has taken out a lot of what Uriah has written and added a lot of things he has not written. So this is the correct link to this book. So you see, brothers and sisters, in order to clearly comprehend what the scriptures have already laid out for us, we must read the writings of Sister White, who Christ spoke through. 
we must also read the writings of the pioneers. Jesus tells us through the prophet that by studying this way, we will be grounded in present truth and will not be going contrary to the foundations that have already been laid. It is true that not one pioneer was infallible and all have made mistakes. But if the prophet endorses the book they wrote and says the Holy Spirit was with them, then we can trust that book. And make sure you go read 10 manuscript releases, all of page 49 and all of page 50. If she tells us certain doctrines of prophecies that they agreed upon were truth, then we can trust its truth because the testimony of Jesus says it is. Satan's last work in the church is to make the testimonies of none effect by making it as if they are not the word of God and really not that important when indeed they have the final say so as to what is truth and what is not truth. The very last deception of Satan will be to make of none effect the testimony of the spirit of God. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Proverbs 29.18 And this can be found in First Selected Messages, page 48, paragraph 3. Let's not forget that it is Christ who spoke through the prophet. In the Bible, it's called the testimony of Jesus. Revelation 12, 17 talks about God's last day people having the testimony of Jesus. And Revelation 19, 10 telling us the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And remember... As the end draws near and the work of giving the last warning to the world extends, it becomes more important for those who accept present truth to have a clear understanding of the nature and influence of the testimonies which God in his providence has linked with the work of the third angel's message from its very rise. So <clears throat> if we believe in present truth, it's very important that we have a clear understanding of the nature and influence of the testimonies. It's not addition of the word of God. The Holy Spirit is the author of the testimonies, of the writings of the prophet. That there's not one thing she wrote or spoke that did not come from the Lord, including letters, recommendations. She tells us it all came from God. And that's in Testimonies, Volume 5, page 654, paragraph 2. To all who have stood in the way of the testimonies, I would say, God has given a message to his people, and his voice will be heard, whether you hear or forbear. You must give an account to the God of heaven, who has sent these warnings and instructions to keep his people in the right way. First Selected Messages, page 43, paragraph 1. The writings of the prophet has been given to us to keep us in the right path. And there's certain books that she says that we as God people are to read. And by doing this, we will remain in present truth and we will be kept in the right way. Unfortunately, many of our people, including a large number of our ministers and teachers, are going directly contrary to many of our prophecies that have already been established. And when you show them what the spirit of prophecy and pioneer writings have to say on these subjects, some reject what has been written and continue to teach their errors. Many will stand in our pulpits with the torch of false prophecy in their hands, kindled from the hellish torch of Satan. Testimonies to Ministers, page 409, paragraph 3. The End One last thing. If you'd like the complete document with many more quotes on the nature of the testimonies in the spirit of prophecy writings, just send a request to cbiblical at yahoo.com. That's cbiblical at yahoo.com. And in the subject line, type in request for Spirit of Prophecy document. Also, if you'd like the document for this YouTube video presentation that has all the quotes, you may request that as well. The book abbreviations for this presentation are as follows. 5T is Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5. 4T is Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4. 3SM is Selected Messages, Volume 3. 2SM is Selected Messages, Volume 2. 
One SM is Selected Messages, Volume 1. MS is Manuscripts. CW is Councils to Writers and Editors. CHS is Christian Service. RY is Retirement Years. EV is Evangelism. And 1MR is Manuscript Releases, Volume 1. Lord bless to everyone. Please share this with all of your Seventh-day Adventist friends and family. Thank you.